The film begins by introducing a skilled driver named Baby. Wearing sunglasses and always listening to music, Baby works as the driver for a gang of robbers led by a man named Doc. In every mission, Doc constantly changes the gang members, but only Baby remains as the driver. That day, Baby and three other robbers, Buddy, Darling, and Griff, are planning to rob a bank, a situation they have analyzed extensively beforehand. While his three companions are robbing the bank, Baby listens to music and keeps to himself. When his friends finally return and the police alarm goes off, Baby, with his driving skills and agility, is able to evade the police. At that time, it was evident that Baby's driving skills were unmatched, making him the key to the gang's success. After completing their job and successfully taking $200,000, police cars are still patrolling the city looking for the red car used in the robbery. While Baby is already buying coffee for his friends at their secret hideout in an abandoned building, Griff, the new member, asks Doc how Baby got into the criminal world. Due to his innocent-looking face, constant music listening, and rare speech, Griff even thinks Baby is mentally challenged. Annoyed, Griff teases Baby because he can't accept that Baby gets the same pay while just sitting behind the wheel and staying out of danger. However, Griff acknowledges Baby's toughness as he remains unfazed despite the teasing, and most importantly, his driving skills are excellent. After Buddy, Darling, and Griff leave, Doc gives Baby a new phone for the next mission and a wad of cash. It turns out that Baby owes a lot of money to Doc, therefore Baby must do one last heist to pay off all his debts. Shortly after, at home, Baby lives with his foster father, Joseph, who is deaf and mute. At that moment, Baby hides the money in the usual place, under the floor covered by a carpet. Apparently, Joseph knows Baby works with a gang of robbers and is even featured in the news as a wanted man for robbery. However, Baby promises that he will do one last heist and then work a regular job like other civilians. On the other hand, Baby has a hobby of tinkering with music and creating his own songs, using any recorded sounds. For example, he records the conversations of the gang members at the hideout. Among his many creations, there is one recording Baby never listens to, which is his mother singing. That day, Baby stops by a cafe and sees a beautiful woman named Deborah who turns out to be a new employee. Deborah also enjoys listening to music and is singing a song at that moment. Hearing this, Baby is intrigued and records her voice. Shortly after, they chat briefly, and Baby mentions that he works as a driver. After learning the title of the song Deborah is singing, Baby immediately buys the song and sings it at home. While Baby is enjoying singing, Doc suddenly calls him with the new heist mission. Knowing this, Baby immediately goes to the hideout with his new team, which includes Bats, Eddie, and JD. The three of them are skeptical of Baby's abilities, especially since he is always listening to music. However, Doc explains that Baby suffers from tinnitus, a ringing in his ears due to a childhood accident involving his parents, and he listens to music to drown out the ringing. Additionally, Doc also tells Bats about his first encounter with Baby. It turns out Baby has been a street racer since he was young, and has never been caught by the police due to his driving skills. One day, Baby stole a car that happened to belong to Doc and contained a lot of marijuana. Realizing this, Baby immediately abandoned the car to avoid the police, causing all the marijuana to disappear. Impressed by Baby's skills, Doc recruited him, and Baby had to join the gang to repay the loss of the marijuana. After Doc explains the plan for this mission, Baby, despite seeming inattentive, remembers all the instructions in great detail, accurately, and clearly. The next morning, Baby and his team go to the location to steal money from an armored truck. Wearing masks, Bats, Eddie, and JD take the money. However, during the process, a police officer was killed by Bats, and as Baby drove away, a soldier who witnessed the robbery decided to chase them. Moments later, due to a traffic jam, they hijacked a woman's car and switched to another vehicle that had been prepared in a parking garage. After that, the robbery was once again successful. As promised, Doc considers Baby's debt fully repaid, but Baby still has one last task to dispose of the car with JD's body inside. Since JD's rifle was left in the first car, his identity would eventually be discovered. It turns out, Bats kills JD on Doc's orders, and the car is crushed at a junkyard. However, it's unclear where Baby disposed of JD's body. Baby then recalls his mother, a singer who gave him an iPod for his birthday, 
which he still uses. However, his parents' marriage was falling apart, with frequent arguments that ultimately led to a fatal car accident. Not long after, Baby visits his regular cafe and meets Deborah again. At that moment, they chat, grow closer, and eventually, Baby asks Deborah out. Because of this, they go to Deborah's laundromat to pick up her laundry, and she asks about his life. Hearing this, Baby tells Deborah that his parents died in an accident. Now he lives with his foster father who has hearing problems, and he used to work as a driver but has since quit. Unfortunately, their meeting is cut short because Deborah has a double shift that day. Despite this, Baby feels very happy, not only because he is free from the clutches of dirty and criminal work, but also because his relationship with Deborah is growing closer. When Baby arrives home, he tells Joseph that he has stopped robbing. Following Joseph's advice, Baby applies for a job as a pizza delivery driver. Although the money isn't much, Joseph believes that what Baby does now can make many people happy because they usually order pizza for parties. Not long after, Baby also takes Deborah on a date using a luxury rental car and dines at a fancy restaurant, with savings from his robberies. However, when they are about to pay for the meal, they find out it has already been paid for by Doc. Seeing his former boss, Baby excuses himself and meets Doc outside the building. At that moment, Doc tells Baby that although his debt is paid off, it doesn't mean he can stop working for him. Apparently, Doc knows Baby works as a pizza delivery driver and offers him the chance to be a getaway driver again because now he can get a full share of the profits. Doc also claims that Baby is his lucky charm since he never uses the same robbery team twice, but Baby has always been the driver because he is the most reliable. Reluctantly, Baby accepts Doc's offer and returns to the dark world, as Doc threatens to kill the people Baby cares about if he refuses. Shortly after, when dropping Deborah off at home, she notices that Baby seems anxious. Hearing this, Baby admits that he feels he isn't good enough for her, but Deborah reassures him, saying that he is a good and different person. After that, they kissed, and Deborah heads home immediately. The next morning, Doc picks up Baby for the preparation of the next mission. This time, the target isn't a bank but a U.S. post office, which Doc says holds a lot of money. In the mission, Baby is tasked with buying stamps while analyzing the situation inside, such as the number of CCTV cameras, guards, employees, and other details. At that moment, he is accompanied by Doc's young son so that Baby doesn't arouse suspicion. Since it is his first time analyzing a situation like this, Baby is clearly awkward and slow at observing his surroundings. Fortunately, Doc's son, having a knack for robbery from a young age, quickly analyzes the environment. That night, Baby calls Deborah to tell her that he has to be a driver again, without revealing that he is part of a robbery gang. Baby also shares his dream of one day driving with Deborah to a faraway place in a cool, expensive car and traveling without any plans. Afterward, Baby goes to Doc's hideout with the other post office robbery team members, Buddy, Darling, and Bats, for a briefing from Doc, where their target isn't cash but money orders, a postal service for sending money. Apparently, Doc has a contact with a machine to convert money orders into cash. The post office has many boxes of money orders, each box containing 250 money orders, and each money order is worth $1,000. In other words, each box is worth $250,000. Doc then lays out the robbery strategy and provides special glasses that can blind CCTV cameras. That night, they are instructed to collect new, untraceable weapons from Doc's contacts. Since the mission is early in the morning, they have to stay overnight at the hideout. Shortly after, Baby and the gang head to the weapon pickup location. During this time, Bats, the most brutal of them, takes the opportunity to rob a supermarket. After a long journey, they finally arrive at the weapons dealer's hideout. Just as they start talking, Bats becomes suspicious because the boxes of weapons are marked with APD, an abbreviation for the police department. Soon after, a shootout ensues where Bats explains that while these people are Doc's acquaintances, they were likely former police officers who could jeopardize their robbery mission. Shortly after, a surviving enemy tries to escape but is brutally shot down. In the end, they all leave with many weapons in tow. When they return to the hideout, Bats asks Baby to stop at a cafe, which turns out to be the cafe where Deborah works. Realizing this, Baby refuses for various reasons, but Bats doesn't like his orders being ignored. They end up eating and having coffee there. 
where Deborah is shocked to see Baby with his rough and criminal-looking colleagues. At the same time, Baby clearly avoids talking to Deborah to avoid suspicion. At that moment, Buddy gets very angry with Bats for bringing up his past with harsh and hurtful words. Bats, who is also angry because Deborah is disrespectful to him, plans to kill her, but Baby stops him. Back at the hideout, Bats lies to Doc, saying they had to kill the weapons dealers because they were the ones who shot first. Hearing this, Doc cancels the post office robbery mission because such a brutal killing would be quickly noticed, and the police would launch an all-out search for them across the city. However, Baby and the others want the robbery to go ahead and are willing to take the risks. Ultimately, Doc agrees to continue with the robbery. Unbeknownst to them, during this conversation, Baby secretly recorded it. Since this mission is highly risky and Baby wants to live with Deborah, he plans to escape from the hideout at 2 a.m. and go far away with her. It's the only way to break free from Doc's threats. However, Buddy and Bats notice Baby's intentions, therefore they catch him recording the conversation about the robbery. Baby explains that he likes to record random conversations to turn them into music, and his recordings are at his home. Without hesitation, Bats beats Baby until he passes out, and they also take his recordings from his home. After playing several recordings, they realize they are just music tracks. Doc also plays a recording labeled Deborah, revealing that Baby knows the waitress at the cafe. However, Baby insists on participating in the mission because he never told the police anything, and even Deborah doesn't know what he does. The next morning, the mission is carried out as planned. At that moment, Buddy and Darling enter through the main entrance, Bats goes in through the delivery door, while Baby waits at the back. Not long after, the three of them come out carrying bags full of money orders. Unfortunately, Bats even kills a security guard without hesitation. Shortly after, panic ensues because Baby doesn't start the car immediately. It turns out Baby is fed up with Bats' inhumane behavior, and he ends up killing Bats. In all the robbery missions, Baby has never killed anyone, nor have the other members, except for Bats, who always kills, like in the bank heist. In this mission, Bats even almost killed Deborah. At the same time, the police had arrived, so Baby, Buddy, and Darling were forced to leave on foot. Eventually, Baby decided to enter a mall to grab a hat, change clothes, and switch sunglasses. Despite these efforts, the police still found him. Baby then used a screwdriver to break into a car and start its engine. A shootout ensued, and Baby accidentally crashed into Buddy and Darling's getaway car, with Darling getting shot by the police. Angry over his lover's death, Buddy began shooting at the police and attempted to kill Baby, whom he blamed for the chaos. Fortunately, Baby managed to escape with a bag of money orders and stole a woman's car. However, Baby decided to return the woman's bag. From there, Baby hurries home, which is already in ruins, to grab his savings and take Joseph away from there. Reluctantly, Baby leaves Joseph at a nursing home, ensuring the staff knows his habits through a voice recording. After that, Baby headed to the cafe, only to find Buddy waiting for him and immediately pointing a gun at him. Fortunately, a police officer suddenly entered the cafe to use the restroom. As Buddy was about to kill Baby and Deborah, another waiter distracted him. Taking advantage of Buddy's distraction, Baby disarmed him, and a shootout ensued. Baby then took Deborah to the hideout first, surprising her with his driving skills. Baby's purpose in going there was to retrieve his recordings and offer a bag of money orders to Doc in exchange. As a boss and a friend, Doc told Baby to take his recordings and escape far away with Deborah, also giving them a bag of money. Additionally, Doc advised them to trust each other and stay vigilant since Baby was now a fugitive. When they went down to the underground parking lot, Doc quickly eliminated the arms dealer who wanted revenge, but he was suddenly shot. Moments later, a police car driven by Buddy arrived and immediately rammed into Doc, killing him. Fortunately, Baby managed to dodge just in time. After that, Baby and Deborah got into a car, and a chase ensued. When Buddy was successfully tricked, Deborah got out of the car to lure him. Eventually, Baby rammed Buddy's car. Thinking Buddy was dead, Baby was shocked to see Buddy had gotten out of the car just before the crash. Angry and vengeful, Buddy aimed to kill Deborah to make Baby suffer the same fate. However, suddenly, Buddy was shot and killed. Sometime later, Baby wakes up in a car driven by Deborah, listening to a recording of his mother singing. However, as they approach the border, 
the police have set up a blockade. Seeing this, Baby knows that he can't escape and surrenders to protect Deborah. Baby ends up in jail while awaiting trial to determine his sentence. Witnesses are called, including post office employees, the woman whose car was stolen, and even Deborah and Joseph. They all testify that Baby is a good person trapped in a dark world. For example, Baby returned the woman's bag and apologized, and he saved the life of a post office employee. Beck UAE of this, the judge sentences Baby to 25 years in federal prison with a possibility of parole after five years. Day by day, Baby spent his time as a prisoner. He received photos and letters from Deborah. At the same time, Deborah learned that Baby's real name was Miles, though she was still getting used to it. After that, Deborah patiently waited for the day when they could enjoy drives and music together again. Several years later, due to good behavior, Baby was released on parole. Additionally, Deborah was seen waiting for him with a classic luxury car, ready to enjoy life together with him. Moral lesson from the story, never underestimate a guy who listens to music all the time. He might be a getaway driver paying off debts to a criminal mastermind. And remember, robbing banks might sound cool until you realize you'll end up delivering pizzas to make people happy.